Hi, so this video is called The Ultimate Secrets of Battery Making and I know it's going to upset people because the ultimate secrets are practice, look backwards to look forwards and match your expectations. That's it. I've saved you the rest of the video. If you want to know more about what I mean, please watch. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to build batteries and I'm going to try and give some advice, which I think is great advice incidentally, on how to go about doing it. Now the channel is absolutely littered with practical examples on all aspects of batteries from making your own materials, making your own anodes and cathodes, putting together cells, putting together batteries. It's all there on the channel. Just have a look at some of those videos and you will discover the secrets of making a battery because there are no secrets of making a battery. Now I know that it doesn't matter what it is I say, somebody somewhere is going to say completely the opposite or argue with me. And I'm okay with that if the argument is sensible, if it's just vitriol, feel free to post it and if it's long, as long as it's not too harsh, you'll probably get a reply. But if you strongly disagree with what I'm about to say and feel that I'm a complete idiot talking out of my hat, then just move on, it's the best thing you can do. However, making batteries is a practical thing. There is no secret to it. There is no wonderful chemistry that is going to solve all our ills when it comes to you making batteries. I mean, there are some great chemistries. There are some marvellous things, but they won't help you a jot. They won't help you a jot because battery making is more or less purely a physical process. Now, I've said this before, and it's the first piece of advice I can give you. Start small and practice. If you start small and practice, you'll get some of those skills that you're going to need. If you rush out and buy a couple of tons of what you need and hope you're going to make a battery, then I can tell you it is going to be somewhat akin to walking down a long cold beach on a windy day with icy rain, getting to the cafe and finding the cafe is closed. You're just not going to be able to do it. I did do an example of this about drawing. <laughs> and a kid post, a 15 year old, said, um, I know all that you're saying. And I thought, okay, because I'm not saying anything wonderful. I mean, who doesn't know? Practice makes perfect. But he insisted he could make this battery. And of course, he never tried. Chances are, if he did, he failed. Because there is a world of difference between saying something and doing something. I can explain all day long, every day, for the next two years on how to make batteries. And you still won't be able to make one unless you start to make one. So, number one piece of advice, start small, practice. Now, the reason these chemistries won't help you is because batteries are purely mechanical. You have to make a lot of parts. Although there aren't that many parts, you have to make lots of them in order to make a battery bank, and it's error-prone, and you will make errors. Just like sawing a bit of wood. You think you can saw a bit of wood, dead easy. Saw wood, go at it and then you'll be depressed to find you haven't done a straight line. It takes practice to do a straight line, even on something as simple as sawing a bit of wood. So, practice. Now, you are not a battery manufacturer if you're making your batteries in your backyard for your home installation. You don't have the machines they've got. You don't have the personnel, the time. You've just got to be able to do it. And you've got to be able to do it with the things that you have in front of you, and that's by no means an easy task. If you rely on fantastic chemistries because you hope that something the size of a quantum dot will light your entire house for a year, then you are unfortunately daydreaming a little. There's competition in the internals of a battery between power density and energy density. The thicker your plates, the easier to make, the more energy density is, but the less power density is. The thinner your plates, the harder it is to make, the more repetition you have to do, the more power density it is, but you have a larger ratio of support material to active material, so the less energy density it is. And that is a direct competition. It's why lead acid batteries plates are around about three millimeters thick. They're three millimeters thick because they're cheap to make. If you top off, uh, chop off the top of a lead acid, have a look in, you'll find 10 or so plates uh, per cell, six cells, dead easy to make. Now, don't knock that. Lead acid batteries account for 55% of the total battery market, including disposable batteries. Lithium ion accounts for only 13%. We think lithium ion is bigger because we see it everywhere. It, it's in our computers, our watches, our calculators, our electronics. They've all got lithium in. 
Now I've got lithium in because price is not an issue when it comes to that kind of stuff. If you want a top end piece of electronics like the newest iPhone, you're going to pay $1,000. So if your battery costs you $100, you don't really notice it as part of that price. But that kind of lithium is very expensive. If you want to make that kind of lithium with those kind of energy densities, you're going to be spending a fortune. So don't rely on these wonderful energy dense materials. I mean, they are good, but they're experimental. Nobody's actually making batteries like that. Nobody will be making batteries like that for a long time. Now, people write to me all the time about the latest craze in batteries. And these things always come the same way. The report always says, could, would, should. Whenever I read could, would, should, I ignore it completely. Because everything could, would, should, if we got uh, an energy source the size of a grain of sh sugar, it could run the world for a year. It should be marvellous and it would change humanity. Yes, that's all true. These um, solid electrolytes that are becoming famous at the moment that everybody seems to be interested in, really, there hasn't been one that's come to the market. Most of them have just been scams to raise money. Hopefully, it will happen, yes. And we can all cross our fingers and hope for that. But that, again, won't help you. It won't help you because you won't be able to make them. When you're looking at making a battery, then you have to moderate your expectations. You have to think about what it is that's within your budget, within your range of skills, and meets the need that you have. You have to moderate. If you don't believe that and you want to write to me telling me all about all these marvellous batteries and how next year we're all going to be holding hands, singing and dancing around unicorns and rainbows, then fine, you think what you want to think. But you won't be able to build a battery like that. I can't build a battery like that because I don't have the machinery, you don't have the machinery, chances are you haven't practiced enough and you don't have the skill either. That's why number one is practice. Number two is in order to look forward, look back. Because battery problems and wanting batteries and wanting an energy supply is not a new phenomenon. It's not something that sprang up in the few years out of nowhere. This has been going on for about 200 years. It's an old problem. And I've pointed this out before. I've shown people this thing. This is a bound Fasimar copy of the model engineer and amateur electrician. This one's volume 4 from 1901. It began about 1830 or something like that. If you grab a copy of that, you'll find recipes for batteries. Tons and tons of batteries that people made in their homes way back then with the least amount of materials and skill. It's awesome place to look if you want to be doing that kind of thing because somebody's already done it before. Somebody's already practiced. They've done it with cells that are large, and okay, they're not power dense, but they are energy dense, and they're large, so they're easy to make. And yes, there are drawbacks. If you want perfection without the drawbacks, then again, you're dreaming. You always have a compromise. You always have drawbacks, and you're always going to accept those depending on what it is that you want to do. If you don't want to accept those, then your other option is to do nothing at all, which is a perfectly valid option, but certainly don't write to me. Don't write to me telling me I should be making a battery. Why should I make your battery for you? Why should I spend all of that time doing a battery, showing you a, a recipe, showing you a method when you don't do anything about it? Because me showing you all of that stuff won't help you one inch unless you practice, in which case it's really down to you. So making batteries actually is down to you. So there is no great secret I'm sitting on just not telling anybody because I'm a horrible, horrible person. Actually, the channel is chock-a-block, full of stuff. The secret that you know as well as I know is to practice, do it, look backward to look forward. Those are the secrets of battery making. Now, I'm sure some people don't believe me. I'm sure some people think I'm sitting on this amazing material that I'm just not telling anybody. I can't tell you anything else. I'm not! I've told everything on the channel how to do that stuff, and I'm sitting on absolutely nothing apart from your reluctance to get up and try, and that's the problem. The problem isn't me not showing you. I've showed you. The problem is folks don't practice. Now I've got this 15-year-old guy. Awesome kid, but he thinks like a lot of 15-year-old kids. You show them once, he knows how to do it. 
Same thing with sawing a bit of wood. You saw somebody who's never saw. Sh- so, you show somebody who has never sawn a bit of wood how to saw a bit of wood. They think they can do it until they try to saw that wood, and it's absolutely everywhere. And we all think that. We think we're shown once we can do it. We can't. We have to practice. The same for sawing wood, drawing a picture, or making batteries. It doesn't change. So my best advice, practice, practice, practice. Second best advice, look back to look forward. Okay, so to summarise, match your expectations to your skill and your resources. If you've never done batteries, don't think you're going to make one. Two, look backwards to look forwards. Have a look at what went before because this is an age-old problem and there's plenty of solutions to it. Three, practice. Don't expect to make the thing tomorrow. Get some practice in there. Now, all of those are puerile and obvious and contain no great secret. And although they're obvious and puerile, it's astonishing how many people think they can sidestep them. So I thought it was worth saying. They, believe you me, genuinely are the secrets of battery making. Those nuggets, really, if you can take them in and you can throw away your preconceptions about how the world is going to be wonderful, if only, then they really will help you. Now, obviously, the practical skills are needed as well. But seriously, there are hundreds of videos on my channel demonstrating the practical skills of how to make batteries and standard and varied chemistries. So review them, try to take the pra- uh, advice I've given you on board and very good luck. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to subscribe.